Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you and today I have a really good topic for you. We're going to talk about bacteriostatic water versus sterile water. But before we get into that, I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to everybody out there supporting the channel. I see the comments coming in constantly. I cannot thank you enough. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, like, share. It all goes a million miles to help the channel grow. It feeds the algorithm. I know that gets thrown around and most of us don't even know what the hell that means. I don't even care. Whatever helps make the channel grow. If it's feeding the algorithm, let's do it. Regardless, thank you everybody. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you. Now, everybody knows today's video is sponsored by letsgetcheck.com. Letsgetcheck.com specializes in at-home blood testing. I love Let's Get Checked. It's simple, it's seamless, it's discreet, it's easy. All you gotta do is go online, buy the test off the website, letsgetchecked.com, check the description below, follow the link. It's very simple, they'll ship it to you, you get the test, ship it right back to them. You're gonna get your results live on your computer screen. You got doctors, you got nurses there constantly to answer questions for you. Um, you know, blood work is essential. I've talked about it time and time again. Check them out, letsgetcheck.com. Coupon code is Jamelli30. They have every kind of test you can ask for, okay? They've got male and female, hormonal, wellness, sexual health, COVID, they do it all. Check them out, use Jamelli30 to save 30% off. So let's talk about bacteriostatic water versus sterile water because there's a lot of times we really don't know the difference on these and people just kind of gloss over it or they wonder, they never take the time to understand. There is a difference here. And so I want to go over it and discuss it with you. All right. You know, these two, while they share some similarities, there are differences here and you've got to truly, truly understand that. All right. You know, athletes, healthcare workers, they use sterile solutions to help in medication delivery, all right? Injections, irrigation, other uses, things like that that we're all aware of. Now, two sterile solutions that are commonly used, sterile water, bacteriostatic water. Patients having the autonomy to take medications at home at their own comfort, the education on these sterile solutions, it's absolutely crucial, all right? There's some similar uses, uh, but then there's some drastically, drastically different uh, um, things here. So we got to take a look at each one, where they differ and where they kind of overlap. So let's first talk about sterile water and its purity. Sterile water is purified water. It's been distilled. It's brought to a pH between five and seven. All right. There's no sort of preservative or like antimicrobial agent that's been added here to it either. Sterile water is available for injection. Um, intravenous, intermuscular, um, subcutaneous. Now a separate formulation is used for irrigation like washing, rinsing, and diluting. You've always got to double check which mixture that you have because you can't interchange between these two formulations. Sterile water is generally going to come in single unit doses um, because the reuse of these units is not good, all right? There's a lack of antimicrobial, so it can easily be contaminated once you've exposed it to surroundings and even to yourself. So it's one and done. Now let's talk about bacteriostatic water impurity. Um, bacteria, I'm just going to call it backwater. It's a sterile form of water that's been brought to a pH between four and a half and seven, so a little different there, and it's been prepared with a bacteriostat. And that's used to prevent any bacterial growth whatsoever. Um, it usually has about 0.9% benzyl alcohol. You've seen that. It's only used for injections like intravenous, intermuscular, um, and subcutaneous. Now, bacteriostatic water comes in multi-dose formulations, so you can use it multiple times. So let's talk about the differences that matter the most. Let's nail them right from the start. Sterile water only has distilled water and nothing else. Backwater is water with benzyl alcohol, so you can automatically see and gauge which is appropriate based on allergies. If you have any allergy to benzyl alcohol, you can't use backwater clearly, and you've got to opt for the sterile water regardless. Uh, another difference is the indication. So the FDA regulates what drugs are labeled for, meaning the drug's intended use. Sterile water is labeled for both injections and irrigations, where backwater is only labeled for injections. I touched on this earlier. Key difference here is multiple uses. 
the a the absence of the bacteriostat I was talking about in sterile water is only going to let you use sterile water one time. Back water can actually be used for up to 28 days before you've got to actually really get rid of it and stop using it. And this can come into play. You know, you got traveling, your budgeting, storage, monthly expenses, things like that. Um, medications that are required um, are diluting with water usually indicate on the bottle which water is preferred for you. So always use whatever's directed on your labels, please. A major different, uh, difference between the two is uh, the patient population. Now, backwater is forbidden from being used in newborns in the first 28 days of their life. Another key difference is availability. Backwater is really easy to manufacture and sterile water is a more difficult process. There's been times when sterile water has been in short supply. All right, we've seen that and it may be wise to always opt for backwater if both water types are allowed for use. Um, there's some similarities here in both of these solvents. Now, both backwater and sterile water are not used for straight injections. They have to be diluted with another drug or another solvent. If you use it in this kind of matter, it can cause literal destruction of your red blood cells. They're also both non-pyrogenic, meaning they will not cause fevers. And besides neonates, they both can be used for the rest of the population, like uh, pediatrics, adults, geriatric communities. So backwater and sterile water can be used in intravenous, intramuscular, and subcutaneous injections like I was talking about earlier. And they both are USP, so that means they have an official monograph or documentation by the United, uh, the United States Pharmacopeia, and both are used for um, IV solutions also. Now, with the pH the way it is, it's more apt a solution for fluid replacement instead of like normal saline or dextrose. So in closing, I really hope this sheds some light in, on a topic that we all get confused on. Just really know and understand the differences here. Um, using either in proper conditions can provide really good results, but you gotta know which position to use them in, what's best for you, what it goes best with with what you're using, etc. Do the research, know the differences, don't just assume or don't just listen to like uh, quick bro science types of information that you get out there. Just do due diligence and understand. So I hope this gave you an explanation and you understand. That being said, stay tuned for plenty more to come. Dylan Jamelli signing off.